You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Dad's After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Dad's After Show. Holla! Hello, good evening, AfterBuzz TV and Dads fans. This is your AfterBuzz TV show, After Show for Dads on Fox. I am your host, Lauren Leonelli, and here we have Kevin John. And Jen the Jew is not with us this evening, but she will be back. And we are going to wrap up episode 14 for season one called Bully Jean. Great name, by the it's way. It's not my love. Uh, I, you know, we should have played Billie Jean. I know, I just intro. thought about that. Damn. Oh, well, that's okay. Do, 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 Great song. That's one do, of my favorite Michael Jackson songs. Do. Me too. Well, Man in the Mirror actually is Man my favorite. Man in the Mirror is mine too! Get out of here! Yes! Wow! Marissa, what's your favorite MJ? Yeah. I was going to say Billie Jean. It is. Okay. Uh, Billie Jean, oh, and of course, Thriller. Yeah, I mean, yeah, typical. Thriller's pretty good. I like Thriller more for the dance and of course. less for the, I mean, whatever. I like, you gotta love all MJ. PYT is up there for me, too. Oh, my goodness. Right? Do, do, do. <coughs> do, 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 do. <coughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry, anyway, this totally went to MJ. We, and also, Jen, her favorite Michael Jackson song is Dirty Diana. <laughs> Just in case I have no you idea. were wondering. Yeah. And also, just in case you are wondering, we're actually talking about dads on Fox, yes. not Michael Jackson. Yes. So we'll get back to the subject at hand, <laughs> which was the episode called Bully Gene. And that little kid was Man. real good. <laughs> he was on point. I liked him. I wanted to sock him. Um, I was on the set this day, uh, what? and uh, the, I saw a little snippet into one of the scenes, so when we get into news and gossip, I'll tell you a little more about it, but it, it's just a little, you know, they always have fun on the set, and they, yeah. they improv, and they, you know, they work through scenes, and they have fun before they shoot, like, rehearsing and stuff, so it was fun to kind of watch in on that, but, uh, but this episode had, you know, that was, like, the main storyline about, you know, Elsa, who we had guest star Jamie Le Lynn Sigler on. I haven't seen her in a while. She just had a baby. It was great to see her back on TV. She's pretty hot, too. She's totally hot, yeah. and she's super cute and funny, and, yeah. like, played the good, like, uh, strong single mom really well. <laughs> and um, and then we had that that secondary beeline story of the uh, the video hockey death match, um, the video game that they were you know, there's always, you know, obviously they work for a video game company, they own a video game company, and so they're always kind of producing on the on the back burner, there's always something happening. Yeah. Um, and it's always fun to kind of see that sneak back in, because we know, it, you know, it's about their lives and their relationships with their dads and girlfriends and wives and whatever, but it's nice to see that kind of come back in and it reminds you about their professional life and how they work together and gotta love me some Veronica, love Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, but man. They're, they're uh, her and Warner's arguments throughout this episode was absolutely. Hysterical. Oh well, no, that was uh, Camilla. I'm saying oh, Veronica. Goodness. Yeah, no, I'm I know sorry. it's confusing because I always do that yeah. too because I want to say Vanessa because exactly. the actress's name is Vanessa. Exactly. But Veronica, in the workplace, who was. Um, uh, Brenda Song. You see, I haven't been here the last couple of weeks, so I'm still getting little, back to Kevin, you know Kevin's been figuring in stuff out. World, here. no, you. but there, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, it's an ensemble cast, exactly. so you got to keep track of them all. But um, I love, I love her deadpan. We always talk about her Man. Brenda Song, Song's deadpan, and this one when she got surprised by the bully, the bully son, uh, or the kid, the kid, the bully, <laughs> the son of Jamie Lynn Sigler. Obviously, we all have a little bit of an issue right here, and I've been here every week, so <laughs> I don't have an excuse. Um, <laughs> she, he, it was funny to see Brenda's reaction to him bullying her, and then, you know, I think Eli well, I don't know if he was bullying her or sexually harassing her. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> like, show me your boobs. You got yeah. boobs? <laughs> I was like, wow. Are this they good just... ones? Describe yeah. them. She was like, well, uh. I didn't know what she was going to do when she said, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come over there. I was like, oh. Uh, exactly. I was uh, like, whoa, this episode just got this, creepy. They're going for it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so you know, so we all we know what opens up with uh, with Jamie Lynn Sigler and uh, Seth Green coming Eli. in from oh, a yeah. date. Eli coming in from a date, and Eli and Elsa was her character's name. And um, it's always fun to see somebody that you know show up. You know, when you like, for example, when you watched Friends and like Brad Pitt walked through the door, you're like, oh. <gasps> Or Christina Applegate, or you know, it's fun to see that. So we we all love her and and know her from you know um, the Sopranos and other things. So it was great to see her and and play like not a Jersey girl. Yeah, she was cute. Um, <laughs> and you know, Eli is his apartment front door is like a revolving door with women. I mean, yeah. he's always got somebody in there. Well, you know, I think that kind of fits his character yeah. because, you know, he doesn't, you know, at least the, the character he plays on there, I know in, in real life he's a nice family man and things of that sort, yeah. but on the show, married. you know, married, yes, exactly, you know, he's a stand-up guy in real totally life. Totally is. But Eli, on the other hand, it just kind of, I don't want to say the word womanizer, but he, because he, he's not a womanizer, but he, it's borderline, yes, for sure. Because this is the thing: he it, he's a single. This is an argument I have in life all the time. Okay, <laughs> well, so let's just talk about. Let me, this. Let's hear your life. You're problems. a single guy, right? Absolutely. Okay, so I mean, I know you're single, but I wasn't sure if you were a guy. I'm just kidding. I mean, I can guess and check and come back and let you no, know. No, we're okay. good. We believe you. Okay. Uh, I'm a black guy too. If that I know, counts. I know. Uh, <laughs> so okay, single guys. And women, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, society gives women this stigma that, like, if they, you know, go around and have fun, if you will, it's a less desired thing than if a guy does it, it's, like, cool and it's okay. Regardless of the societal myth that goes along with that, let's just talk about the fact that a single dude is a single dude. And, like, sometimes chicks freak out about, like, oh, God, that guy's he's, like, dating a, a bunch of girls. Like, what do you expect him to be doing? He's single. Exactly. I'm not saying you need to be a jerk about it or you need to, like, try and, you know, screw women over or treat them badly or whatever. But if you're not tied down and you're single and you're going on a couple dates a week or a date here or there with different girls or you're dating somebody and dating somebody else at the same time, as long as it's not serious or behind someone's back, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. See, this is the way that I look at it. I mean, I don't, if I like a guy and he's like dating other women, that sucks for me, but I can't, that's just, that sucks for me. It's just. That just lets you know you got to step your game up so you become well, that, yeah, you know. yeah, I guess. What do you have to do to step your game up though? Well, when you, you know, you could cook. Men love women that cook for them. Okay. You know, that, that automatically solidifies you as one of the top ones. Okay. Um, you know, in addition to that, you can, oh. it, it don't always think it's, okay. <laughs> as Lauren is taking notes over there. <laughs> Lauren, actually, you're blessed. All you got to do is turn around and show the guy your backside okay. and I'm sure that's plenty for, you know. Oh. Um, you? Just saying. Yes. And I meant that in the most non-sexual harassment type of way. See, we're talking but about sexual harassment here, so we can just keep it going. It's e fine. Exactly. I'm not offended by that comment. Awesome. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, I, I think that, I think that promiscuity on either side while yeah. dating, that's not something I necessarily condone. Totally. But then again, I think that unless that you, unless you're dating someone and you've established that it's exclusive. I agree. Then you're free to continue dating whoever, however, I agree. whenever, wherever. And I think that's what Eli does. And I think it's okay that he does that as long as it doesn't cross the lines of promiscuity or being like, you know, going behind someone's back and doing something Just that you haven't done. Or... Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, it sucks if you're the girl and you like the guy, but there's nothing you can do. And in this relationship, to seem like they're only on three dates at this point, yeah. you know, and he's he's always got a girl, yeah. but it never really goes far. I, though, know, or from what he's chosen to show as an actor or what the writers have given him to work with, Eli does not seem like a deceitful, promiscuous, mean dude. Yeah. Like at his heart of hearts, he seems like a nice guy. I mean, we even saw in the last episode with Veronica when she was sick, like his goal was to get her to stay over his house and take care of her so eventually it could turn into something. But then at the end of the day, he admitted he his maybe his intentions were not that great at first, but he did really care about her and like her. And I think that that is what kind of makes you not, it again, I'm giving giving a friends reference. Joey from Friends. Yeah, he was a womanizer, but he had a good heart and you know he meant well. So it's like you could you still loved him. Exactly. Cuz I think I I think you made a, a good point there. You know, if as long as you have good intentions and exactly. mean well, 
I think that's fine. I mean, because there are women, uh, guys that are womanizers that just go out to, you know. Just for the betray, sake, the sport to, of it. Exactly. <laughs> to them, it's like a recreational game of golf or and something. And that is not okay. That's not what I'm saying. Or I mean, exactly. it's okay if you want to do it, but I don't think it's yeah. okay. No judgment here. Yeah. But, um, but, you, but you're he's right. not. he's not that. I just, but I do, you know, he's single, so it's realistic that he's doing these things, whereas the other, whereas Warner, he's at home and he's dealing with Camilla, and there, there's a funny thing there we can talk about with the fights the fake fights and how funny that he wrote it in his, in his planner book. yeah <laughs> oh warner pick a fake fight with her at 10 30 whatever it so was you I can was like, sleep on the couch wow. and he was so excited and like fresh and happy in the morning because he just loves his couch so much my couch is pretty comfortable is yours my couch is okay but my cat sleeps there a lot so oh, you, you know a cat? I, I do have a cat yeah oh. a tuxedo cat Oh, I think we talked about this. I have a cat too. We have cats now. We're in the cat club. So we like Michael Jackson and we have love cats as well. And he so. likes a big ass. Looks like a love well, connection. <laughs> I know, right? Someone may not be single after our. Oh, hey. Um, Valentine's Day is next month. Uh, no, but my couch is pretty comfortable. So I can really relate to uh, Warner wanting to sleep on the couch. But yeah. I, I, I can just walk like 10 feet and go to my bed. So it's. Like, yeah, I was about to say, my bed is a lot more comfortable than my couch. Okay. Well, anyway, I get it. He's, he wants to sleep on the couch. He gets caught by Camilla, which, I mean, you know, he's never, he never gets away with anything, especially with her. And, he, you know, because he, he does little Warner things that give things away, like writing the note in the book or just whatever it is that he does that just trips him up, um, which is funny to watch. And, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, that whole thing blows up. Uh, it, and how funny was it when he came home? And the couch was a bench. I know. And his face. <laughs> what are you talking about? Right? That <laughs> was, was like so cute. Sleeping on cement there. I know. But, and then it's funny because he ends up shacking up with his dad. I know. And see, that, I'm like, <laughs> Which, I wonder if I could be like that. Like, I, I can be kind of fiery sometimes. And Vanessa in real life, I know her. And I think her and I are similar. We've got like a little fiery side to yeah. us. And I like that she Which shows... Which us men, we find that sexy in a woman. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, I think that, that she's a very natural actress and her parts of her that are real come through. And so you can see that fiery side in her. Yeah. I'm like, dude, would I do that? If I found out my husband or boyfriend was like doing something like that, would I like throw it back in his face and be like, you're sleeping on the couch tonight? I don't know. What would you do if you were in that? I don't know. I would like to say I'd be like, sleep on the couch, but then maybe I wouldn't because I'd feel bad. I like that she didn't feel bad. I like that she was like, um, you're sleeping on the couch now. Now yeah. we're in a real fight. That's what she and said. And I don't think she should have felt bad for the simple fact that it, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, like, you know, why don't you want to be sleeping in the bed with exactly. me? Exactly. You're I married. Know, you I should know. be wanting to sleep next to your wife and holding her throughout the night, not on the couch oh, or isolating. Holding, holding her. Okay. Well, holding her, touching her, loving her, whatever you, <laughs> you want to call it. But at any You rate, know you what it happens there. with them. You know, she wears the pants. So she's doing Remember, didn't he say in one, like, one of the first episodes that she threw him up against the wall and the layers of skin were like scratched yes. off his back? It's like she's the man. It's so funny. I love them together. <laughs> Um, I would never imagine them together, but to see them on screen, it, yeah. it, they make it ha they make it look real and they make it seem real. They and do. their juxtaposition of their character types <laughs> are so funny. Um, so so then we get introduced to you know we we realize that Eli is dating Jamie's character Elsa and you know and she's got a son and um, I am sorry but. That was so funny when she, you know, they, they, she meets the, they meet the son and she, Jamie Lee or Elsa, I should call her, leaves to go into the kitchen and he's left alone with the son. Eli's there and, you know, he starts getting bullied and he, uh, and he says, the son says, I, you know, are you sleeping with my mom? You know what last came out of there. I was eight pounds, eight pounds. and 18 inches. Yeah. What are you? <laughs> I was like, I can't believe there's always like, they have zingers in their episodes and then every like now and then there's like a line where you're like, uh, you can't even make a noise because yeah. you're like, oh. wow, did he just go there? <laughs> and then Eli's response was smaller, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. 
<laughs> that was a good moment. It was so good. That was yeah. my favorite line the whole episode. Yeah, no, that, that was... But, you know, the thing was, kind of like you were saying before, you know, Eli has good intentions when he dates. I think that was just another part that really showed his good heart and compassion yeah. inside. Like, he was genuinely trying to be nice trying to Trying to kid, connect, yeah. Trying to connect with him. He wasn't being an a-ho, which was yeah. ironic that the kid was acting such of a... Totally. You know? So, yeah, that little kid was... And the mom... This is the thing. Okay, two things here. Bullying, I think people overuse that word. Well, yes, as of the last two years, I think everything is seen as bullying these it's days. It's like, dude... You could tell someone, shut up, and that he bullied me! Yeah, like, and really? it's like, there is like a healthy level of that that goes on, and then there's like an unhealthy level where if people are, you know, threatening people's lives and stuff yeah. like that, then... I mean, that's not okay, clearly, but it's like, I don't know, I mean, what kid, teenager doesn't get depressed and not feel like I'm not it's a very serious issue suicidal obviously but you feel like down and you're oh you know like I, I think that just that term gets thrown around very easily but it's very you know I guess current of them to be using this idea but in the reverse which I thought was funny because you know they always use something that's actually going on in the mm. real world and then they make it in, not into a joke because they're not making a joke out of bullying but they make it just bringing awareness they to the bring issue. satire to it yeah. by making Eli being the one who's getting quote unquote bullied, which whatever I mean, you know, yeah. made fun of is, is a better way to say it most of the time. But he's yeah, I guess he's getting pressured and bullied by this little kid. And um, the language of this little boy was pretty funny. Not a surprising <laughs> dialogue coming from the writers of the show, which is what makes it funny and good. Um, and then the other second part of this thing is like it makes you wonder like. You know, Elsa had no idea that her, she thinks her son is just peachy. And can I say this? Most, I think that's honestly something that relates to the real world because I think most mothers are in denial have about no their children. Well, they you know. they always think their kids are smarter, cuter, funnier, yeah. nicer, and well more well-behaved than exactly. they really are. Exactly. So, or most of the time. I think that's the case. So, uh, and As then in this. your mother is calling you right now. Exactly. <laughs> so in, in this situation, I feel like she was not only does she think highly of her son, but she also was oblivious to, except for the part where. So then, um, I, did you see the the, the part where uh, he Tor was trying to get Veronica to come over, and then Tonita Castro's character um, Edna came over, and right before that happened, she, uh, he was like, "Leave, Elsa." Yeah, yeah. El uh, Elsa said, "Why are you wearing cologne?" He goes, "Get out, get out." And I go, yeah. "Oh," because I was wondering, does she see this like? kind of mean side of her son and right there he kind of showed it a little yeah. so maybe she's in denial or I mean obviously this wasn't what the episode was about but it makes you think about real life situations yeah, like this. Yeah, exactly. Like, do you just do you just let your kid be that way to you and you just ugh whatever because you don't want to deal with it? Imagine it's so much more worse at school probably. Absolutely. Well I think it goes back to parental problems and yeah. not to go extremely off subject but as some of the viewers know I, I'm a substitute teacher on the side uh -huh. and I deal with situations like that all the time where you know I'll have to tell a parent that their child was caught doing X, Y, and Z today. Right. They automatically think that another student provoked it, another student mm -hmm. was the one that was in charge. You like know, what's the reason? What's, yeah. yeah. You know they never want to accept bar and I it, yeah. throw it back into this. I think it's kind of the same thing. Elsa she probably knows her child is a troublemaker, particularly because there's no father figure there. Yeah. So anytime as a single mother, you're, you're trying to it's raise harder, kids with no father. Or it's, it's single difficult. father, just one parent exactly. is a different, more difficult job. Exactly. But anyways. And, and, and also, in the, it's a perfect example because he, so he, he basically robbed Eli. Oh my um, God. He came over to the house, said, you know what, now I tricked you into sexting me. And now I wonder what he did. Did he say something? Or I thought he sent he sent a photo because he was. I thought going, Eli got a picture. Yeah, he did. Eli got a picture. I'm like, what did he send? Oh, that makes me think. What did he send? Then after he said I was sexting you, I thought, oh, maybe he was just, you know, text only. Mm -hmm. But he there was a picture there. Anyway, he he robbed Eli as you all saw and took you know his money and his jacket and his game, and uh. And so they're going back to retrieve the game. And Elsa, back to what we were saying, is like, he, no, he, he uh, 
Gene told me that Eli gave him that video game. So that's the end of story. Like, wipe my hands And that's clean. what makes no that's sense. That's what you're talking about. Exactly. What kind of grown man will just give another a, a child their jacket? I can see the video the game. Video that's game. justifiable. It, exactly. Of course, kids love games. But a jacket, a, a grown man jacket. Well, Eli's yeah. not really the size of a grown man, but still. And it probably fit him. And it probably could so fit the kid. Absolutely. But still, why would you just give someone their jacket like that? That made no sense to me that she would actually fall for that. I know. You know. I know. So that's the denial that we're kind of talking about. I mean, clearly they weren't diving into it that deep, but you know, just to, again, to but bring yeah. it back to reality, that's, exactly. I th I'm sure that really happened. So it kind My of made it real. perfect. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I think yeah. the game she was trying to play and she played it well, it was believable. Yeah. And she was protective of him and Edna came in, tried to get the game back. She did, but when she broke the bat over her knee and then flipped the table over, I was dying. I love the Edna. And then when she said, <laughs> Um, if you need a uh, house cleaning, I'm available Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Thursdays. <laughs> that like just topped it off for me. Obsessed with her. God, Lee, Edna is on point. I yeah, love she, Edna. She I is, mean, every she's episode, she's amazing. I want to marry a woman with the tenacity and just uh, a courageousness of Edna. I know, like, right? Seriously. I want to be. That woman would fight all my battles for me. I want to be Edna. You can. I think I, so. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. See, I'm just trying to figure out if I'd make my husband sleep on the bench couch that I switched out. Uh, no, as, lo as long as you're taking care of him in bed, I don't think he'd have any reason to leave. But at any rate. I would hope so. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so, and the, um, you know, I mean, again, this episode dealt with real life issues. They made a satire out of it. It was funny. The episode ended with, uh, oh, that just we should touch on really quick the, uh, the Texas hockey death match the the guys oh that God. come from texas to get that game and the texas dudes and you he i'm gonna let him talk about it because yeah. because the commercial the fake commercial you were upset you loved yeah i think it was called the texas big box or something commercial yeah. and it, it was those two those two guys i forgot their names in the actual i know thing, i forgot but, who they are too oh my gosh you just talk about your stereotypical and Hick, stereotypes. Redneck yeah. from the South, loves the shotgun, you know. And this commercial was just extremely over the top. But they, that's like a local commercial that you'd see. You know, like when you see in L.A., you see, um, oh, my gosh, what's his name? Cal Worthington. God Your mattress is soul. free. No, not that guy. But oh, okay. Cal Worthington, Worthington Ford. He died oh. recently. Oh, but wow. it's like, that's what he's like. He's like, come get this car. Come get this car. You know, it's like, and yeah. the, it's like the background behind him. And he's standing. Anyway, it was like, that's it's what it cheesy, reminded yeah. me of. Exactly, but obviously they took it to a whole nother level. Totally. They, they were taking their shotgun and just shooting random things. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's so good. You just want to shoot something. Do it, but he's just shooting stuff. Totally, yeah. And then there were some old people, elderly people there. They threw them off because they said you don't need a mom and pop shop. And they like just, it, it was just, right. it was my favorite part. Of that, that was episode. your favorite part? Okay. By far. I like, yeah, it, it was pretty funny. I like when people make, you know, it felt like a little SNL sketch. It, sketch. it was exactly. funny. And then we see when they come in that, they, you know, they're making fun of these people from Texas and their their stereotypical mindset and of course they come in they're like we saw everything we needed to see in san francisco we saw a crooked street a bridge or something right a, a bridge and, and a gay, a gay guy or, and a gay, gay guy. guy yeah it was like clearly they you know they're a little bit more these characters were a little bit more narrow-minded and using yeah. a stereotype of a narrow-minded southern person which is a stereotype i'm not saying that that is how southern people are but um, I'm assuming these these were a little more right winged uh, big business dudes that did not they wanted to buy you know all the units of the game. Eli and Warner didn't want to sell didn't want to you know sell out and give it to them because they the they mom and pop stores that. put them on the map. So yeah. they you know they had to turn down a really lucrative deal and again, five million. And that's, you know, it, it just shows their hearts. You know, these guys are business guys, but they, you know, they, they do it because they love it and they want to support people who supported them. And I think that's nice. And um, and then it was a funny little joke at the end that Camilla put him back on the couch because was, she was like, you did what? Um, and I like yeah. that she was like thinking, oh, we've got money now. We can put your dad somewhere. And then it was like it came back all around full circle. It was cute. And um, I, I love the little boy in this episode. I don't have the actor's name, but if you know it, tweet us or let us know on, you know, iTunes. And speaking of iTunes, if you're there, rate and comment. Thank yes. you for the stars and the ratings. And tell a friend and keep the convo going here so we can keep the lights on for you guys at AfterBuzz TV. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I was happy with this episode. I laughed out loud a bunch. You know, one of the funniest things, of, um, in addition to that Texas commercial that I really liked, it was in the very beginning of the episode when um, Eli and Elsa were sitting on the couch, and she's like, okay, there's something I have to tell you. Oh. 
and you're kind of anticipating that she's going to yeah. drop a bomb on him. So they both, Eli was like, okay, we'll just say it at the same time. Yeah. And then he was, he, Eli goes, you're, you're bisexual. bisexual. And she goes, I have a kid. <laughs> he was like, oh, you have a kid. Okay. Was, oh, my God. Yeah, his, <laughs> the line was funny, but his reaction, how he tried to cover yes, was even well, more exactly. funny. That's exactly. what I love about Seth Green. Yeah. And Giovanni Rubisi, they both do that yeah. really well. And like, he just threw it off. He's like, oh, you have a kid? Okay. Oh, like, yeah. He He's just, like, oh. Like, he didn't even say that. And then that. <laughs> that scene ended with, I have something to tell you. I have a dad. Which yeah. I thought was funny. It's that was cute. Clever. This, this show is cute and funny and, and, you know, crosses the line sometimes. So that's why we love it. Yeah, you got to love a little. If you're not offended or, you know, appalled by some of it, then you're not enjoying it. I you know. know. You have to. <laughs> right? Offensiveness No is pain, joyful. no gain. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's get into some news and gossip. Oh, yeah. After Buzz TV News. Okay, so I was on the set the day they filmed this, and I saw the re one of the rehearsals, and I saw the scene where he was, the uh, Gene character was threatening Eli. And I don't remember, I can't quote verbatim, but like it was the end of the scene, or maybe it was the end of the line or something where I think um, he, you know, Gene was up pretending to, he was about to punch Eli and um, Seth Green's, you know, they, they rehearsed their lines and then Seth Green at the end said something like, I forget, there was a question in the line or something and he said something inappropriate and swore. Um, but not like in a, like a super profane vulgar? way, okay. not a vulgar way, but he said like a funny little swear word, like comeback, and then they all laughed. And it was like, I mean, yeah, this kid, I think is probably older than he was playing, yeah. but it, it goes to show that, you know, they're, they're like, they're kind of giving each other crap on the set. Exactly. Even with the kid, they're making, they're bringing him in. Like there was camaraderie there. You know, this kid's on the the, the set for, for just a couple days. And it just kind of felt like watching them do that little exchange. It was like, ah, oh, like this kid, you know, they felt like they had a good rapport. It was cute to watch. So was the kid really super nice, you know, aside at it? Like, did you, you see know, much interaction with him? I didn't see much side? interaction, but I just saw them kind of rehearsing that and then going over the lines. And then Seth broke and said something funny. And it was like, oh, okay. yeah. So, you know, I didn't really see that much of it, but I got to see a little and it was just, a Again, it's like, I'm telling you guys, it's what you would imagine it would be like. Yeah. Like, they're, yeah. it's like ha just, they're having fun. Mm -hmm. It when it was obvious. And even with the, you know, the characters that just come in and out there, they, they have fun with all of them. And it, it was great to watch that, just to solidify, like, that's why it's fun to watch this show. Yeah. Because, you know, they're having fun together. And then also, you guys, if you don't follow um, any of these actors on Instagram, you should, especially um, Vanessa Lachey and Seth Green, because their uh, Instagram names are at Vanessa Lachey, and then Seth Green says at fifty three R two D two yeah five three T H six R three three N because they always post up like there's pictures of Jamie Lynn and and Seth up there. Vanessa just posted a picture of what's going to happen in an upcoming. That was going to be my prediction. Yeah. So. You guys should follow them because yeah. they give you little tidbits and it makes it kind of interesting to in you know incorporate the social media because they let you know what's going exactly. on and it's fun to see that. So make sure you follow them on Instagram. And uh, let's do some predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. All right, Kevin's dying over here. What What's your prediction? I don't know. See, I guess I would be kind of cheating on this prediction because okay. I did see the picture. Okay. That, but anyway, um, for those that have not seen it, there's a picture of like a stripper pole uh -huh. in their bedroom. Mm -hmm. In so, Camilla and Warner's bedroom. Yes, thank you. In Camilla and Warner's bedroom. Okay. And um, so I'm predicting that something goes down in their bedroom that is extremely exotic. Uh huh. Um. Uh. You know. Uh, should I say extraordinary and freaky deaky deaky? Oh, so, hey. Yeah. I, know Boom, a, chicka, bow, wow. I know a little bit about this episode, but I don't know a lot about that in particular. But I am going to, and this is not cheating because I do not know this, but I am going, and I don't know when that, I think they just shot that episode this Tuesday. So we might have a week or two until we see it. Oh, I forget okay. how exactly it works, but I don't think it's going to be the next episode. Uh, or I know it won't be, but um, I am going to predict that Warner gets up and tries it. I know that Camilla plays around with it a little. I know that. I don't know how or what. I know that. But I, I, I bet you we will see Warner up on that pole. 
Warner on the pole? Yeah, at some point. He's always the chick. You know he's going to get up there and like try and do it. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I want to see that, but it would I be think hysterical it would be to say That's that my prediction. Warner's going to get up on the pole. And I am not cheating because I don't know that for sure. Uh -huh. um, all right, you guys. Thank you for tuning in and listening and watching. Have you ever been on a pole? Yes, duh. Wow, there's things I'm finding out about you. <laughs> she said, duh, like everybody does it. I'm sorry. I, Not like I, a real, in a real know. strip joint, like for real, real. Like have you ever got paid and had ones thrown at you? No, you mean it, someone to make it rain on me? I've yeah, had that it, happen. Wow. But not like because I'm actually like stripping at a club for a job. Okay, I don't know where this is going, but it's very interesting. All right. It was for fun, okay? <laughs> yeah, sure. You were drunk in college that I one day. Wasn't, and, uh -huh. I wasn't. I yeah. wasn't. Actually, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening and watching here at After Buzz TV. We are happy to bring you your latest updates on our favorite shows, Dads Tonight. Um, and please, like we said, keep the convo going. Tweet us. Go on Instagram. Go on iTunes. Let us know what you think. And we will see you all next week. I'm your host, Lauren Leonelli. You can find me at Lauren Leonelli on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and my website. Yes, and I am Kevin John. You can follow me on Twitter at Hey Kevin John, Instagram at Hey Kevin John, Facebook Kevin John Peters, or my website www.itskevinjohn.com yeah. All right, we will see you guys next week. Yeah. Bye. Take us out of here. Bye. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.